Hello guys, RMP792 here again. So I've just recorded the uh, vlog of my thoughts on uh, Legacy of the Void. And now the other thing I've been playing recently, which is of course the absolute juggernaut of a game that is Fallout 4. Um, yeah, I finally caved to pressure and just kind of bought it. And it's not bad. It's... <sighs> I'm not one of the people who reckoned that Fallout 3 was the greatest game ever or anything like that, and I think Fallout 4 is better than 3, it's probably better than New Vegas, but it's still got a lot of problems. Um, I'm going to start with something I like first. The story is definitely one of the better ones that um, Bethesda have done. Because, let's face it, main stories in Bethesda games tend to be kind of terrible. You know, the, the one for Fallout 3 isn't particularly interesting, the one in Skyrim's boring, and you know, it, generally they're not great. The one here is not bad at all, though it, it's got a lot of their usual problem. Namely, it's meant to be this big, massive, important thing, and yet you're constantly doing other other stuff, and you know, you're spending half your time building stuff, and, and not you know, rescuing your kidnapped child. So, um, but I, I, I definitely like it. I'm, I'm, you know, it's a good game. I'm not bored with it, but it does definitely have its frustrations to me. The first of which is that settlement system is kind of terrible to my mind. Um, Mostly that's because the interface for it is... It, it's just awful. Um, I get this is probably one of those... You know, developing it across consoles and PC and everything else at the same time. You know, let's face it, this has come out for you know, pretty much everything. It might as well be on the speaking spell. Um, but this... It, it's always really hard trying to talk about a Bethesda game, because let's face it, this is going to get modded to all hell. You know, it's it's pretty much built from the ground up to be a platform for mods. You know, and th there's already about half a dozen that I've already realised that I want. Um, starting with, can I get a top-down interface for the um, building settlement thing, please? So that I'm not constantly doing it from first-person view, because that's annoying. It, you know, placing stuff exactly where you want it is tedious, and I don't enjoy doing it. Yeah, you know, with a nice top-down view, so that I'm playing it more like an RTS, you know, or or a sort of city simulator type game. I could play stuff exactly where I wanted. I could uh, see everything I need to see at once, and it would be a lot less annoying, frankly. Um, so I, I basically ignore the settlement thing. I, I did enough to make Sanctuary basically functional, and then I've just I haven't tried to establish any more settlements. Any quest that looks like it wants me to do that. I've just ignored because I, I have no interest in it. It's it's just not fun for me. Um, something that I think the game does do well is actually the crafting. I like the fact that I got given a, a basic plasma pistol as a reward for um, doing a quest, and I immediately took it back to uh, my workbench. And you know, I've got all the si well, I'm now up to rank. Three in science, I think. Yeah, I just got the rank three science perk because um, I'm about I'm 29 hours in apparently. <laughs> um, so I'm about level 30-ish, and so I've, I've just recently picked up science level three, so I could heavily modify that plasma pistol and you know, stick a sniper barrel on it, stick an extended grip on it, and it basically turned into a plasma sniper rifle. And it's actually a really good gun. Um, and I like the fact that I could do that. You know, the crafting system does give you a lot of stuff you can do with the weapons and a lot of ways you can change it. And that's coming from me. I hate crafting systems in most games. And you know, there's other little bits to it I like. You know, it gives you a reason to actually pick up all the random junk that's scattered around the world. And I like the fact that you could just go to your workbench and immediately just dick, drop it all, because I don't want to be carrying around that kind of junk, and you can't, obviously. You know, so just being able to go to your workbench, drop it all off, and immediately be able to access from all the nearby workstations is really useful. Um, 
Same goes for a lot of the armor crafting. I, you know, I like the fact that I can now keep my basic vault suit because I'm a vault dweller. Should we wear a vault suit? God damn it! And just you know, slap different bits of armor on it, and you know, I'm now running with um, synth chest plate and things like that because they're you know pretty decent. And then there's the one thing this game does absolutely the best of any game I've ever seen, and that's the power armor. Yeah, the power armor this game is really good for the simple reason that it feels like you're just stepping into a walking tank, which is what power armor should feel like. You know, the only other game that's come close to this is uh, Space Marine, and that's less about the armor and more about the whole experience of being a Space Marine. You know, it's not the armor that's doing most of the work for you there because you are, you know, you, you're a goddamn Space Marine. You are awesome, but here. You know, you, your defense rating goes from, you know, like, 20 to 400, you know, for a single piece. And you're just like, wow. And it it's amazing. You feel big. You feel bulky. You feel powerful. And, again, because it's a Bethesda game, and I know it's going to get modded to hell, request for modders, Space Marine Power Armor. You know, get, get me some skins for various different kinds of power armor from various fictional media. You know, let's get some Warhammer... Uh, power armor in there. Let's get some uh, Marines from StarCraft 2 in there. Let's get you know, Iron Man armor, Hulkbuster armor. Because this is the first game that's really made me feel like my character is wearing a proper suit of power armor. Oh, another thing. Built in weapons. I want this as a mod. Because, you know, you just look at this massive power armor and you think, why has nobody ever thought to just, you know, duct tape a gun to that so that it's actually part of the armor itself so that's that's another thing I'd love to see modded in you know because that's an easy enough thing to do from a animation standpoint because you know when in use lift up arm you know when not in use lower arm <laughs> you know so that that is something I would like to see because that'd that'd be a really interesting thing to add to the upgrade system for the armor itself you know upgrade it so that you can put a weapon in one or both of the arms that'd be nice um, and again, this th that's always the thing about Bethesda games. I immediately start thinking, what would I like to see done to this to make it better? Which is not something I do with most other games. This, because Bethesda is so mod-friendly, it's always my immediate first thought. It's a case of, well, I like this, but, well, we could do this better, or yeah, so on and so forth. Um... As for the graphics and the art, which I've heard a lot of people, you know, a lot of people saying, "Oh, it doesn't look as good as Fallout 3." Uh, yeah, it does. It looks quite a bit better, actually. Yeah, you know, but the new art style is different, certainly. But I massively prefer it. You know, again, because it makes a lot of stuff look like it's got a lot more weight than it used to. You know, a lot of the designs before were... I don't want to say floaty, because that's exactly the wrong word, but... <laughs> no, I'm just... Sorry. I, I did get the floating dogs bug at one point. Yeah, it was only like 10 seconds. He was basically you know, trying to follow me across um, a sort of pit, and he basically just sort of wandered round straight over the pit and just walked straight across thin air. Um, <laughs> which I don't think he's supposed to do. But, uh, yeah, as that that's another thing. For a Bethesda game, at launch, it's been surprisingly non-buggy. It's crashed for me twice. And because I'm very quick save happy, I didn't exactly you know, have to go back very far, so that's okay. But, for the most part, it's been really, really stable, and it's run pretty well. Um, but, yeah. As per usual... You know, as I say, it's not the best thing I've played this year. You know, I, I j I'd have to have a sit down and think to decide what that was. <sighs> no, it's probably still going to The Witcher 3 at this point. Either way, that won't be turning up in my uh, year-end list of best and worst, because that'll be stuff I actually covered on the channel. But I might look up a quick vlog for, you know, best games I've played this year that I didn't feature on my channel. But anyway, um, but no, it's it's good. It is a very good game, 
with a lot of annoying niggles. And as I say, and the problem with all Bethesda games is that you know that most of the annoying niggles are going to get modded out. But the question is, can you <clears throat> use the fact that it has such an awesome community make up for the problems I have? Oh, great. Now I've got the bloody hiccups. You know, the, the, the community that Bethesda has, the modern community, is so amazing at some of the stuff they come up with. And I, I am genuinely fascinated to see some of the stuff they'll come up with for this one. And I suspect a lot of the problems I have with it, which, you know, the interface is a little dodgy, the control scheme is a bit weird on PC until you get used to it, I'm not a fan of the conversation system making me use the arrow keys to pick my conversation option. You know, let me use the number keys. You know, I'll, I'm, well, as soon as they come up with a slightly more installation-friendly version of that conversation mod that's uh, come out already, you know, that actually does assign it to the number keys, I will probably get that because that's a very obvious thing to me. Because, incidentally, voiced protagonist, hells yes. I will always prefer games that have voiced protagonists. That's a personal thing, but that's the way I feel about it. And as per usual for me, I, I've been playing as the female uh, PC. You know, I, I spend about 20 minutes in the character creator deliberately creating myself, and then deliberately let myself die so I could play as my hot redhead wife, because why the hell wouldn't you? Um, you know, go, come on, she's voiced by Courtney Taylor. What the hell is not to love there? But, uh, anyway, and, yeah, the voice work is good. The storyline is pretty okay. As I say, it, it's, it's the best I've seen in a Bethesda game, which I appreciate is damning with faint praise. But, it, you know, it shows they're learning and they're getting better. So, at the end of the day, I am enjoying it. I will almost certainly see it through. At, at this point I've sided with the Brotherhood of Steel because well the Institute are bastards on about 12 different levels. I agree with what the Railroad's trying to do but the problem is that I, I trust the Brotherhood. I don't trust Elder Marks on. I happen to think he's a prick. The fact he's voiced by the same guy who played uh, the teacher in Life is Strange doesn't help with that assessment but uh, um, you know, I, I'm strongly inclined to think I'm probably going to end up trying to kill Markson at some point and take over that division of the Brotherhood just so I can, you know, stop them murdering every synth they come across because, let's face it, you know going back to the whole my love of Star Trek thing, every time they talk about whether synths are people or not, I just get immediate flashbacks to, um I'm going to kick myself when I remember the episode title the, um Episode of Star Trek Next Generation Season 2 where Data's on trial to decide whether... Or not, measure of a Man. That's the episode title. It's Measure of a Man. Um, where they're trying to decide whether or not Data qualifies as a person or not. And he thinks, he feels, he can react. He's a person. You know, there's, there's no doubt about that in my mind. So I'm curious to see where it goes. Um, I've heard that the ending is a little disappointing which, again, would be on the par for a Bethesda story, but we'll see. I, you know, for now, I'm enjoying it, and, yeah, that, that's basically all I wanted to say about it. So, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in future videos.